Americans consume three times as much information each day as they did in 1960. And surveys show that students in the U.S. spend at least six hours a day using electronic devices. Many of these students use several types of media at once. Multitasking is innate in humans, according to George Mason University neuroscience professor James Olds. It's my belief as, as a scientist that all humans are born multitaskers, probably one of our um, species-defining characteristics. James Old says multitasking has its benefits. He cites the example of a commercial airline pilot whose attention must be divided among many sources of information. The pilot is now really sort of a data, master data controller running a war room, if you will. The ability to fly a modern commercial jet uh, is, is tremendously advantaged by growing up in the uh, digital age that we exist in now. But researchers say that each time a person switches tasks, it takes twice as much time to complete the task, and that people that use several forms of media at once, so-called high-media multitaskers, are even more easily distracted, according to Johns Hopkins University brain scientist Stephen Yantis. The high-media multitaskers we're always in a state of, of looking at multiple sources of information simultaneously, and so they found it more difficult to ignore information that they knew was irrelevant, and that, and that um, distracting information impaired their ability to focus on the task uh, at hand. Scientists say that the human brain is in development well into a person's 20s, but the effect of constant multitasking on brain development is not yet known. Like a computer, the human brain has a limited amount of information it can process at once, according to Stephen Yantis. The brain is, although there are billions and billions of neurons, so it has very high capacity, it's not infinite, it's limited. And so we're constantly having to make choices about what we're going to devote our mind to. That devotion to information found online may also go too far. Researchers at the University of Connecticut found that 7th grade students had difficulty discerning that a website showing a mythical endangered Pacific Northwest tree octopus was a hoax. All but one of 50 children thought the information on the website was valid. The danger of the net is that information doesn't have appropriate labels of, its, of credibility um, attached to it. We need to figure out a way as a society to come up with methods of actually, um, especially for our children, rating the credibility of, of what's out there. So the core question remains, are new media making people less attentive, less studious, or more gullible? Most experts say no, according to Lee Rainey of the Pew Research Center. This isn't a technology question. This is a human question. The Internet makes people more of what they already are. So if you're dumb, if you're prone to shortcuts, if you don't have a, a good sort of BS detector in your head, the Internet will give you lots of information, lots of ways to divert yourself, lots of ways to make you more lazy than you already are. By the same token, if you're an information omnivore, if you really want to gain expertise in a subject, if you really want to sort of study something in depth, you've never had a better environment than the online environment. Psychologists continue to study the effect of the Internet on learning, but initial research shows the Internet can have a positive effect on standardized reading test scores of children. Unlike television, home Internet use is interactive, and experts say it encourages young people to be more self-directed learners. I'm Martin Seacrest.